Eden Cause here with Just Be, and we are about to take a spiritual boom. We are at an unprecedented time in human history where we are transitioning from 3D to 5D within the great spiritual awakening. This video and audio podcast is the place for you to find your truth beyond politics, your sovereignty, your voice. Let's kick up your vibration now. By the way, each episode ends with the Just Be practice to do just that. And as we begin the show, just to know a little bit more about me, I'm a soul realignment specialist, meditation master, and dimensional healer. Learn more, and there's merch also at EdenJustBe.com. Let's get this party started. All right. Smile it up, Lori. Sometimes I do crazy <laughs> things like this. I just get all into it. <laughs> and I wouldn't have done this multiple years ago, but now I'm like, you know. You be you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Think we got some stuff? Oh, I see. You mean I could have done that too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you want to do that? You can. Sure. Oh, I love it. I love it when my guests do it too. It's so. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. You're funny. Anyways. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. To bring a lot of energy to the show. Can I have, I have to? Oh, do this. Get ready. Oh, the other thing I was going to say yes. too, if you want what I love doing, although <gasps> we might not have time in an hour, but channeling. You and can ask for channeled information, channel guidance, anything channel. That could be your practice if you want. Ask any kind of questions. It'll, it'll, you okay. know, call, them a team. It'll call them the collective. Okay. Why don't we, why don't we do that them. for the practice? I think that would be, that would be great. Oh yeah. We can do that or, and or energy healing. Channeling always brings through energy anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So P and Colin, they channel Larkma and Larkma always speaks. That's the practice for them. Oh, <gasps> I love that. Okay. <clears throat> Eden, just be spiritual boom in association with a grassroots warrior network and now welcoming spiritual activator and more Lori. I'm going to say Spagna, but give, give the other pr pronunciation. Spagna is the Italian. Spagna, Spagna. Either okay. way, it's fine. Dude, how many, let's, let's, let me just go ahead and ask you this question. How many books have you written? <laughs> yeah. I think it's seven now. Okay. I think it's seven. Okay. I'm in the midst of my first and it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's a lot. We together are going to go into more 3D to 5D explanations, DNA, pet communication. But as y'all know, I always do a quick little blurb to start out the show. Then I read Lori's bio. If you skip through this, go ahead. It's probably going to be about two or three minutes. Yet, I wanted to start this and give a testimonial since Lori is here today. I've got on my 3D to 5D merch, especially since Lori was going to be here. So my merch is now live. Okay. I'm doing COVID spiritual healings right now. Um, book is on the precipice. So we are at this point where, for me, and I'm sure a lot of you light workers, energy healings or healers are kind of the same. I, I've, I've always been small. And that was because during the COVID and the pandemic, that's when I became spiritually awake. That's when my marriage uh, disbanded, friendships disbanded. So it is like a new awakening for me. And this is a chance for me to be big and be deserving. So I'm very curious to see if this will be easy, knowing that it's all up to me. It's all up to me. If I'm going to allow this to be easy, and I'm assuming there are going to be some setbacks and some things I need to work on, yet I wanted to say this in front of Lori and to say it in front of all you people, I, I just want to go. And I hope that all of you guys want to go and let go of all this programming. And I guess this is, this is what this is about. Right? Would you say, Lori? Yeah, the shifting from old paradigm to new paradigm. Yeah. Yes, That's and where, and allowing where. yourself to be deserving to be because I, I mean I got a I got a powerful mouth on me, <laughs> ah, and not being scared of it anymore, and just being able and willing to just jump into the divineness, the love, the power, the abundance, all of that. Okay. So I'm putting this out there, as I said, kind of a testimony to go, okay, look, look, y'all, this is what I'm, I'm doing. And not that y'all have to hold me to it, but I'm going to hold myself to it because I'm telling you guys this. All right. So let's lead, let's, let's read Lori's bio and then we'll get into more. Lori Ann, Lori, do I call you Lori or Lori Ann? What's the best? Lori, okay. Ann is my middle name. 
There you go. She is a best-selling author, speaker, spiritual catalyst, intuitive guide, mentor, multi-dimensional channel, animal communicator, energy healer, visionary, mm. light worker, and star seed who has transformed the lives of thousands of humans and animals via her channeled ascension guidance, intuition, sacred energy healing, dormant DNA, activations, divine transmissions, and animal communication and telepathy. She provides transformational experiences, sacred energy healing. I'm going to slow down so we can really feel these dormant DNA activations and is the founder of the sacred visionary mentorship for soul centered visionaries. Mm, I would count myself as one of those who want to make a global impact using intuitive guidance, multidimensional channeling, energy work, metaphysical tools, and higher consciousness so that you can truly contribute to the expansion and the upliftment of humanity. Yeah, come on, align with your soul's true agenda, live the life of your dreams, and achieve your highest fulfillment. Welcome, Lori. Thank you so much for having me, Eden. I'm so excited to be here with you. That was an awesome reading of my bio. Thank you. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. Okay. You have so much spark and charisma. I want to know what your birthday is. Oh, thank you. It's uh, December I got 7th. got a fire sign in there. Ooh, okay. December 7th, 1968. Ah, so you're scorpionic in sun sign. Seven is the spiritual number, by the way. And you got a, I love seven. a 19 right in the middle, of, right off the bat of your life path. Because 12 plus seven is 19. So you are here to transform and you are here to, and I didn't do your full numbers, but definitely that's a lot about merging with your own it is about resolving your own shadow, but it is about merging with your higher consciousness and becoming one with it and developing your intuition, your higher, your unity with source. That's awesome. Right in your numbers. Love that. You got a 29 as well, which is 11. So you're learning mastery and leadership because I'm just adding your numbers. What If you're willing to say your last two digits. Sure. 68. So 29 plus six becomes a 35, which is eight, all about self-value, self-worth, yeah. but also about claiming your sense of authority within yourself. And they'll tell me the very last digit again. Eight. Oh, so you get another eight there. So that's your last lifetime number, by the way. So we're talking 46. That's your life path. If I did the math right, 46, that's really about creating a new foundation for yourself, finding your true vibration. Right. Or is your foundation, what is your foundation in the old paradigm? Your foundation is your home, your family, your mm -hmm. job, your career. But in the new paradigm, your foundation is your vibrational resonance, your core frequency. What frequency are you resonating at? That's the four. And the six is heart is about service contribution, really opening and activating the heart, developing the capacity not only to serve others, but to serve self and source, to unify your your compassion, your love, your care with, with what you're bringing into the world and find that balance in responsibility. Be, because those of us who are, who are major, sorry, that's my dog shaking out there. Those of us who are major six people are truly heart-centered and truly compassionate, truly caring, and so we have to learn the balance of responsibility to self, to others, to source. It's an interesting life lesson, the six, wow. right? Because it, it develops your capacity to love and care deeply. And at the same time teaches you, you have to be responsible to yourself. You know what yeah. I mean? You can't care to your own harm or detriment. Okay. Who, who is that beside you? Now, this is Emma or Emma Shasta. Oh, or in her princess self, Emma Shasta Sophia. Because <laughs> I have a feeling we're going to talk about Emma some too, because I heard <laughs> you talk about her in another um, video that I watched. And by the way, I always do a lot of research before I have a guest on. So there, there have been some really wonderful things that I've watched that Lori did. And, and one of the um, main ones that I saw was 10 years ago, you talking about this awakening going from 3D to 5D, you also being um more on this path where a lot of us woke up because my awakening was during covid 
So I, I, I want to talk specifically more about 3D to 5D and that transition and where we are now. Yet, I also want to find out just for a moment about your own personal waking awakening. I know I, I watched about your corporate job and your brother, his death being significant to you. Can you put that in a, in a, in a quick synopsis as to why you're here? Yeah. Well, what happened was I, out of college, I spent the first like close to 20 years in corporate America. And I was miserable, like miserable. And I couldn't find a way out. And I just was doing all kinds of unhealthy things like, you know, excessive smoking, drinking, spending, sexing, you know, eating, partying, uh, spending, 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 on and on, like all those unhealthy things that we do when we're mm -hmm. self-sabotaging. And I was miserable. I would cry every day, every night. I was going to doctors for help and they would pump me up with pharmaceuticals. And I mean, massive amounts of unreasonable, un like crazy oh, wow. amounts of pharmaceuticals. My thyroid was off. My hair was falling out. It was just <gasps> extreme overweight. Couldn't get to sleep. Couldn't wake up. It was all kinds of problems like that. And it was really just because I was misaligned. I was diagnosed as, you know, all kinds of weird diagnoses and nothing was solvable. It just not, there was no solvability, right? And then when my brother died and it was a drug overdose, right? It was an accidental drug overdose. Although, you know, in the afterlife, I now kind of get it. It was a suicide, not deliberate, but it was. Um, you know, I started getting messages from my brother and I started it took me a long time. Like I had to work with that for about a year before I realized like, I'm not making this up. This isn't just in my mind, or this isn't just some part of me that wants to believe that he's with me. Like just too many things that I was testing and asking. And anyway, then I started getting messages from all kinds of dead people because no one's really dead. Right. And that's how okay, so, so your brother, that. like it started again, that process of, oh, is this just in my head? But oh my gosh, this made sense. This came together. Is that what kind of happened to really make you believe it? Well, I guess? there were things that like, I would ask for a lot of validations mm -hmm. and, you know, if I'm not making this up, give me this. And then even with the, all the validations I would ask for, I also would start <laughs> asking like, all right, you're going to need to give me something I don't know. Okay. Like, tell me things I don't know that I can validate. Or tell me something I don't know that will make sense to me. Those kinds of things. <laughs> so it was a whole year of that. But while that oh. was happening, you know, other gifts were starting, slowly started to come online. And then it just, it just like the floodgates. When I really got it, the floodgates opened up. So that's when I started getting, I had a lot of so-called dead people coming to me, like mm. famous dead people and um, ancestors, relatives. And then... So what happened was that year, that initial year of that, I was still married and I was living in LA and at that time, and I was just starting to have these epiphanies. My husband wasn't into any of it. I was on, you still doing all those unhealthy behaviors. And then he was sort of like, I'm going to divorce me. So I moved to Maui and that's when I started getting into a lot of the esoteric practices, learning to work with energy. I got my Reiki master. That was where I started in Reiki. I started to get into the healing modalities and right away, the animals, by the way, in, even in the first year, animals started talking to me because I was developing my capacity mm -hmm. unknowingly through my own practice, not even being taught. I was developing my capacity to use my inner hearing, Claire audience, my inner seeing, Claire voyance, my inner sensing, Claire sentience, all these extra sensory abilities were developing without me really trying I was just trying to know if I was crazy or not right <laughs> right so so I started getting messages from the animals and their big message was like you listen to us and we'll teach you mm. so I just started really getting good at listening to the animals I was I became a dog trainer in that year so I was developing my capacity. Can I ask you this question? When you left LA to go to Hawaii, was that when you left your corporate job? Was that the big No, I shift? left the corporate job the year before. Oh my gosh. All right. So as soon as I was getting the real message from my brother, Jeff, his message was, you're on the same path as me. You need to change your ways. You don't see it because you think you think yours is all sanctioned. Like I wasn't doing drugs, but I was drinking excessively. You know, I wasn't like, you know, doing some of the stuff he was doing, but I was doing those things, mm -hmm. just not to the same extent. I, mean, mm -hmm. I just didn't see the mirror in it. And so 
as soon as I got that message, I quit. I became a dog trainer. I started getting messages from the dogs. But even in that window of time, I was already like developing my capacity without realizing it. So after the first year, that's when I moved to Maui. That's when I started getting into all the esoteric practices. Got it. And yeah, I mean, from there it just took off. But I'll just say, and I'll end this part of my story, was that during those two years that I lived in Maui, I mean, it was just such radical change, right? It was so radical and so fast. And I mean, I had a on ship experience, right? Like teletransported on ship. I had um like what you would call not near death experiences, but mm -hmm. not in the traditional in the traditional sense of the word, not like in a hospital. But those experiences were so transformative that in those two years, everything all of the wounding patterns uh, that were causing and contributing to like the excessive smoking, the drinking, the you know, the spending, the hair falling off the thyroid, like I healed all of that. So within two years, I never smoked another cigarette. I never drank. I mean, I do I drink now so rarely, you mm -hmm. know, I gave up all artificial foods and food substances like that. I lost tons of weight. I healed my thyroid. I went off all kinds of pharmaceutical drug, like every pharmaceutical drug. And I, really haven't even needed even an over-the-counter drug in over 20 years. So that was the initial, I was getting letters from the banks. Like we forgive your debt. That was wild. That's <laughs> right. Wow. Just like out of the blue. Me, all debt is, is where you hold yourself hostage, oh. practice forgiveness, forgive the banks, forgive the bankers, forgive the corruption, forgive the greed, forgive it all, forgive all the wrongness that they've done, forgive it. And it just mirrored back. It just, that's the, that's the amazing thing, right? So anyway, that's the kind of the long and short of it. But I just want to say this last piece before we move forward with the conversation, yeah. because even after the experience in Maui was over and I moved back to the mainland, you know, you think like, oh, you've gone through this awakening and transformation. It was still like 20 more years of deep, deep trauma healing. Yeah enormous amounts of emotional pain that I had to heal and resolve. So many issues related to self-worth, self-value. That's why I get the A, right? So many issues related to, you know, the things that we humans go through, like, am I worthy? Am I deserving? Do I matter? You know, does anyone care? What does it mean to be loved? How do I be loved? Like, you know, it's all those kinds of issues. And just what, you know, what is my purpose here? What is my reason for being here? How am I going to share this in the world? And I knew I wanted to be of service to animals. That was always a mantra for me, but I had no idea how the early stages of just trying to, um, you know, develop my own sense of uh, self, you know, my own sort of self growth mm -hmm. and my own sense of self worth and my own personal growth would catapult me into this kind of spiritual transformation. Like I wasn't really planning to be on a spiritual, I, I never was planning to be a channel. <laughs> yeah. Like I just, all I wanted to do was become a better person and help mm -hmm. animals initially. So the journey just took me, like that's where the journey took me because really all personal growth ultimately will lead you if you stay the course onto a path of alignment with your source, with the divine. Uh, wonderful. All right. Let me, let me ask you, uh, especially what's happened in Maui recently, how does that register with you? Okay. Well, as a human, it registers with me. It, like, so it's so sad, right? Deeply compassionate and loving for the humans, for the animals, for the land, you know, the Aina, the, the land, you know, the tree that thank God is now growing back in Lahaina, that mother tree, that grandmother tree. But on another level, you know, I'm not playing at that frequency anymore. Yeah, I understand. Where I engage at that level. I'm aware of that level of me, that part of me that that has that. But I'm engaged now much more at a sort of a higher or purer frequency. And this isn't coming from arrogance. It's just because I've cleared up my, all the density in me, all of that emotional 
you know, energetic, all of the entanglement in the physical world, I see, perceive, and understand the bigger picture. And I operate from that perspective. And I'm existing at that frequency of consciousness. And at that frequency, I I know that I can offer more service and contribution mm -hmm. to humanity, to the area, to the geographical area, to the animals, to the plants. So I just do everything I can. And this is just part of my journey, no matter what, yeah. to continue elevating my frequency so that I'm not trapped into any form of density. So that while I have this physical form, I can contribute and be the solution that I know people are looking for. I know that I have within me infinite resource, so much solution, so much to offer and contribute because I have done this inner work. And the truth is we all have that potential. The challenge is, is to do the inner healing work. It is hard. Yes, it is. It is hard to look yourself in the mirror and say, I don't like that part of myself. I have to take responsibility for the mistakes I've made, for the pain I've contributed to or caused to myself or others. It's hard to process. Like, even as I say it, I can feel that in you well up, the part mm -hmm. of you that resonates with that. And because I'm like at a frequency where I get, I'm not in that pain, I can feel it and not, it doesn't have to take over me, but this is, it's hard work. And a lot of humans don't want to do it. And I get it, you know, but th that's part of it. And I know we're going to go here next. That old paradigm is based on, you know, that ignorance is bliss and you don't have to process through your shadow and you don't have to like, look at anything. And it's fine to remain ignorant and let false authorities and dictators tell us what's true, real, or right. Right. And believe and buy the lies of the external experience and think that that's what it is and that's what's true. That's old paradigm. And there's a lot more in there. And I know we'll talk more about it. But new paradigm is like, I'm leveling up to something so much better. But what's what does it require? It requires mm -hmm. us to move through the shadow aspects of our own separation our own wounded bits our own wounded self our own traumas and to somehow heal resolve and ultimately integrate that release and transmute it so that we level up right i call these frequency fences because these frequency fences are the energetics that keep us trapped or mm -hmm. stuck in any current experience that we have at that vibration where we are. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. So let's say a person has relationship problems. They're in a frequency fence where there's issues related to relationships, either with self, with source, or with others, people, places, things, experiences. And until they resolve them, they're going to perpetuate the experiences. So I'll give you a perfect example in my life. I used to really resent TSA. I resented, at, there was a period of time I, I resented cops. I resented these so-called authorities who felt like they could, whatever they felt they could do. Because I, I didn't think they had that right. Those rights, they were taking rights that they didn't think that, that I didn't agree that they had. Mm -hmm. So I would go through TSA and constantly get like, searched and patted down and problems <laughs> and then a friend one time she just was like you know why don't you just clear your issues with tsa and i was like oh god why did i not realize that myself so then i just did forgiveness practices i started really considering like the light side of it and just allowing myself to see greater perspective the higher perspective like i had to work through it <laughs> now nothing. Now I never have that problem anymore. <laughs> it's so funny that you bring this up, Lori, because when I go through TSA, I am just, you know, knowing that so, so much of this started with 9-11, but just, I go through it and I'm just like in the x-ray, just, you know, just smiling through and doing kind of like, what, yeah, I'm just going to be here. And also feeling the fear of other people around all right. of that, but just, you know, attempting to be the light and be... Right excited I mean, right the thing is tsa the story with tsa is just an example right but the the bigger picture of it and i totally get that i mean yep. but the bigger picture is we can improve the quality of our lives mm -hmm. so 
dramatically and significantly when we're willing to look at the parts of us that are causing or contributing to the experiences we don't desire. And so in the old paradigm, and I know this is what you were asking about, in the old paradigm, we're operating basically from this perspective of I, me, mine, me, 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 me. It's a very narcissistic program or pattern of way of being. It's a survival-based reptilian way of operating that we have to survive. And it doesn't matter who you kick to the curb so that you can survive in that mm -hmm. reality. And all the leaders are like that. Doesn't matter who you kill, maim, or harm. Doesn't matter who you lie to, manipulate, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just, that's the way that reality functions. And there's all kinds of patterns and ways of operating in that old paradigm. Like you're a victim and someone did something to you. Someone's a perpetrator. It's mm -hmm. you're at the effect of everything that happens to you in that reality. The external reality has power control over you, whether it's a false authority, a false leader, or your allergies, you know, all of those things in the external world have power over you you know, your siblings, your spouses, they hurt you, they harmed you. And that's how that reality operates. Your, your, your spiritual teacher did something wrong to you. Right? right. I mean, it's just on and on the energy's bad. I mean, I see this all the time in light worker circles, right? Oh, it's bad energy. Got to protect yourself from that bad energy. No, it's your energy. Own it until you <laughs> own it. And I don't mean to sound harsh because I, I am so truly compassionate oh yeah i feel that in but you this is yes. what i'm saying you can't mm -hmm. keep resisting and fighting and struggling with everything in that reality as if it's not yours yep. because you will just stay in that reality mm -hmm. that is third dimensional paradigm you're a victim of the things in the external world so so the fourth dimensional paradigm is where we start working with the non-physical we start recognizing our thoughts our things our emotions how our energy you know, yes, we have the potential to communicate with beings in the non-physical. They hang out, you know, they traverse that. They're they're interdimensional, so they can hang out and interact with us there. You know, we're working with the non-physical, including especially our own shadow aspects, our traumas, our wounds, our pain, our suffering, the abusers of our lives, the bullies of our lives, the self-sabotaging patterns, the unconscious programs, whatever they are. We're also starting to explore potentially, if people choose it, our own DNA. What's in there? What's, what is the dormant DNA? What's stored in there? What's waiting to be reprogrammed or realigned or, re, or awakened? You know, what energy can we work with? What light? What ascended masters? What divine goddesses? Like that's part of moving through 4D and you release and let go of what doesn't serve you. And you embrace and move into more of what does serve you. Now, that process doesn't stop just because you start elevating more and more into 5D, right? And by the way, I just want to say, really important, 3D, 4D, 5D, et cetera, their language, they're not, first of all, they're not outside of us, it's within us. It's transformation from within. It's vibrational bandwidth. It's not somewhere we go. Mm -hmm. It is how the vibration within us changes. So every time we break through frequency fences, we elevate into new bandwidths of energy where we start to see and perceive and experience things differently that generally speaking come with these amazing ahas, like, oh my God, so good, right? Yeah. And then we start operating from this new way of being. And in the journey, we collect, which we could also call that downloads. We could also call it transmissions. They're not exactly the same thing. We could also call it awakening or up leveling, but it's a kind of we're collecting new ways of being, new ways of behaving, new ways of operating. We can call them virtues divine virtue. So for example, mm. in the third dimensional paradigm, that. magnanimity doesn't exist. 
you hate your enemy. Maybe you're a good person, a good religious person, and you try to forgive your enemy, but you still have an enemy. <laughs> In the new paradigm, you don't have an enemy. You have an aspect of your own unconscious that is mirroring to you who you are or what you believe about yourself or what you have to heal and resolve or what you have to make peace with or who you have to make peace with, right? And more and more people in that new paradigm are more aligned with that way of being. You collect... You, you are much more magnanimity. You are full of magnanimity because you understand that your love, your capacity to love is expanding exponentially. Another divine virtue is equanimity. In the old paradigm, there's no equanimity. There's extreme polarity between, let's just use wealth as an example. Yeah. You know, wealthy, global, rich elites who are in that old paradigm, they don't care who they screw, most of them profit to the expense and loss of others mm -hmm. profit and gain over the expense, pain and suffering of others. There is no equanimity, very little. Anyhow, new paradigm. It's all about equanimity. How can we all thrive? If I thrive, you thrive too, to the benefit of all and always ideally to the harm of none. That is a whole new way of yeah. operating. And you can only really be there if you're resonant with it, if you're vibrationally compatible. And if you've collected that divine virtue of, in this example, magnanimity or equanimity and those virtues in order to collect them, you can't just say, oh, I have them. No, you have to actually be them. Mm -hmm. You have to behave that way. If you want kindness in your life, you have to be kind. If you want love in your life, you have to be loving because it's all based on vibrational alignment. That's where 5D begins. That's where 5D begins. But you're still in 5D frequency. You're still working on all those shadow things. So it's not like you're not, you just get there and arrive. We're interdimensional beings. So we're traversing these energies, these frequencies, these vibrations. We're learning so so-called lessons, but really it's not about so much learning a lesson as it is about receiving the knowledge, the wisdom, the energy, the consciousness, the vibrational attunement and alignment, the and then allowing it to integrate. One of the fastest ways for integration is humility. Okay, I don't know what I don't know. Yep, that's nice. I'm not sure what. I, I, you cannot be a know-it-all. The moment you're a know-it-all, you block. You cannot be a skeptic or a cynic. That will block. You cannot be someone who's trying to prove that it's all BS. You know, those people out there, they're like witch hunters from other lifetimes, right? Puritans, or, you know, they're the skeptics, the cynics. They're just the blockers. They'll never be able to get to this frequency until they say, let me really, truly be open-minded and do my best to become open-hearted. Because this is this paradigm is based on heart intelligence, Mm -hmm. old paradigm brain intelligence right new paradigm we still use the brain in an entirely different entirely way. different way yeah entirely. show me the science show me how this works let's see it i have to see it that's old paradigm right <laughs> yes you could prove it right yes uh i was going to ask you something but i just forgot oh well, tell let's just transition to this for a moment uh you're one one thing that I saw about the, the crystals that are really good for ascension. Do you mind going over those? Oh, for a yeah. Second? Yeah. Well, there's, a, I mean, first of all, I love crystals. And yeah. crystals are a fabulous tool. And the way I see and understand crystals is that they, they're anchoring in frequencies, energies, vibrations, and consciousness. So they're like time capsules, in a sense. From, in a sense, you could say the future or from a higher or purer resonance of energy and so when you start working with the crystal they can help unlock that for you now the crystals to go to your question one of the most important ones is shungite shungite crystals if you put them near on any and all electronics they are really really good at neutralizing the so-called 
positive ions mm -hmm. from which is dirty electricity bad electricity we call them positive ions this is how screwed up our world is like i don't know they're not positive <laughs> really in the game of duality they're things that are harmful to you so shungite is awesome appropriate shungite in the water is awesome yeah i could go on about all the benefits of shungite walking through walking through a an airport shungite on the body awesome right. especially if you do go through those machines like i don't ever go through the machines i go for the pat down but you know, whatever your choices or your preference, those are good. Okay. Good for you. And can you spell yeah. Shungite, please? Just to make sure everybody -H -U -N -G -I -T -E. knows. S-H-U-N-G-I-T-E. By the way, okay. they can just get like this. People can get this. I have a free gift called um, yep, the will have that. you need, what, mm -hmm. what to do with them and how to use them. It goes into how to clean them, clear them, all that. It's an e a free ebook and also a free um, class that comes with it. Cool. And that's at lauriespagna.com forward slash free gifts forward slash mm -hmm. crystals. Oh, I'll have that in my notes. Yeah. So thank you. So yes. the Shungite's one of them. Then the other one is a Lemurian crystal, which if I had it in reach, I would grab it and show you, but it's out of my reach at the moment because um, I've always have crystals on me. But the Lemurian crystal is a clear quartz crystal. Those Lemurian crystals can help with DNA activations. They can, I could go on and on. We could have a full, full hour conversation about them. They're always good on your body. They help up level and protect your frequency. They're awesome for like um, using around the house. They're just so good. They have, there's so many codes in them and um, frequencies of consciousness. You just have to learn how to use them, learn how to clean them. All that stuff is in that book, by the way. Okay. But the Lemurians are great. And I've used those to like, I mean, these weather storms, I, I use yeah. them in my family's homes and then around our homes. And I've had experiences where like with my parents' house, for example, their whole block was, went through Hurricane Sandy and the act, the the damage to the other houses on the block was so extreme. And my parents' house was untouched untouched. Okay. Well, why right don't, door, you know, so like that's, that's unbelievable. Well, it is believable. Uh, why don't we, okay. Cause I love you just giving a nod to this and I will include the link so people can discover more for themselves. Cause I, I just like talking about it a little bit anyway. Can you move? Cause I really want to hear about pet communication, what that's like for you. And, and you stated before that um, when, okay, if I get this right, when you left LA to go into Maui, that's really when you started doing pet training. Is that correct? And then yeah. hearing oh, voices great. and that, okay, just tell, tell us more. So, okay, well, first animals communicate telepathically using a different brainwave than us. Mm -hmm. And they, they use more than just their brainwave. Um, so we're, most humans, especially in that old paradigm are only using a beta brainwave when they're mm -hmm. awake or a delta brainwave when they sleep. If they meditate, they they go into an alpha. When they're watching TV, alpha is a very suggestible brainwave. So when they're watching TV, they, they can be very brainwashed mm -hmm. because they might be using an alpha brainwave. So when someone says, be very afraid, call your doctor, do you have this problem? Do you have this, this problem or that, or buy this or buy that? Yes. They're being brainwashed and they don't know it literally brainwashed literally because they go into an alpha brainwave and the job of the alpha brainwave is to say, yes, all is well. Yes. It's just an agreeable, very agreeable brainwave, but animals communicate through a theta brainwave when they're using a brainwave. So they're not, it's not a thinking brainwave. It's a knowing brainwave. It does. There is communication there, but it's more like there is thought there, there is activity. It's just a different kind of activity, brain activity. Mm -hmm. So when I'm teaching animal communication, that's one of the things I remember in my earlier days, people would come to me and be like, I took a class. I still don't know how. And I'd be like, well, do you know how to access the theta brainwave? And the first thing, well, like, what's that? They didn't even know. So that's one of the pieces of it. But beyond that, animals are already using their extrasensory abilities in ways that we're not. So when we learn how to use our other extrasensory abilities, even beyond the additional brain, the theta brainwave, you know, we, we can learn how to use our, you know, other capacities, including the heart has brain matter. The gut has brain matter. We know this from the Institute of Heart Math. 
I've been made fun of the, of saying this oh, years ago, man. Yeah. I had interviewers who were like witch hunters who kind of like were skeptics and cynics. They definitely were. And they made fun of me for it. And now it's known. Now it's known scientifically. We have mm -hmm. brain matter in the heart. We have brain matter in the gut. So the animals have that already. I don't know if that science knows that, but it's more like they just have the ability to send and exchange information in those ways. And when we cultivate and develop our ability to receive and exchange information through those methods, we can do that too. So, and the other thing is that because in that old paradigm, we're primarily left-brained. In that old paradigm, our corpus callosum is detaching the left brain from the right brain. So we tend to operate them it's not that they're independent, but they're just not working congruently. We're not utilizing our brain properly or to its fullest potential. There you go. Let's say it that way. Because it's not, not properly in that old paradigm. That's how we use it. Right. But in the new paradigm, and I teach this in my sacred visionary mentorship, and we do this, we clear out the amygdala. Like science doesn't even realize you can do that. The amygdala is what carries all your fear, fear programming. The hippocampus campus carries all your fear so we clear that out. You don't need that in the new paradigm. There's nothing to be afraid of. Mm. All there is is love in the higher frequencies, peace, joy, compassion, you know, things that you resonate with. If something pops up, you heal and resolve it, right? But we work with the brain. We restore balance between left and right brain hemisphere. We expand in our pro practices, the corpus callosum, so that the brain hemispheres are synced, working together. And there is no technology in the world that can oh, do this gosh. better than your consciousness working in collaboration with the divine. Mm -hmm. There is no physical technology that can do that better, though they are attempting to do it. So the animals really have more of this. And I can't speak to it scientifically, what the animals have, but their capacity for knowing is far beyond the human capacity right now. So I'll give you a perfect example of this. If I suggest something to you that you're not thinking of in this moment, the moment I suggest it to you, you're going to be aware. Like it was there all along, like Australia, France, uh, uh, elephants. So you weren't thinking of it necessarily, two right. months ago, but you are totally aware those things exist. Well, that's how the animals think. They just have awareness. They're not utilizing their left analytical brain constantly. They just have a lot of awareness. So if you ask them for information about something or any kind of insight or to talk to you, sometimes it will translate through like as if it's coming through like a conversation mm -hmm. because they can utilize your faculties too to communicate with you. But in some cases, they'll just give you brain dumps and it, it just depends on each unique individual. And just one other thing about animal yeah. communication is that overall, the animals are here to help humans, not in the way we think in the old paradigm, like, oh, you get to eat their bodies, you know, in a whole new way, they're here. They are this, they're psychic sponges, they're energy sponges. They're teaching humans about energy, about, you know, yes, ourselves. So you can learn so much from animals about incredible gifts of wisdom, knowledge, energy. And it doesn't have to be just pets, but pets are the animal companions that we have they know your secrets. They know what you're working on. They're basically assigned to you or you meet on some level pre-birth and say, we're going to work on this issue together. <laughs> and whatever the issue is, we're going to work on this together. And it's going to be my issue, but it's also your issue. And so the two souls have an agenda to address, heal, resolve something. So the animal, this is why I say animals know your secrets, but not from a, like, you know, from and right. From the perspective that they're here to help us. Yes. Can you speak of one of your most memorable experiences talking to, to an animal? I guess it's the best way to say it. I mean, one of my most famous, favorite, most memorable was one of my earliest, believe it or not. Although I've yeah. got so many, I could go, we could spend an hour just talking about this. Right. Yeah. But I'll never forget this one was when I first started really getting into animal communication yeah. in a way that it wasn't just like I was getting messages, hearing it and like learning 
from like dogs and other animals. It was more like I was actually practicing it. So I was living in Maui. I was um, on Craigslist back then was like all you had. And someone posted from Oahu, a woman with a horse posted, you know, I'm looking for an animal communicator to help me with this horse. And I wrote back to her and I was like, well, I can't guarantee anything. I'm pretty new at this, mm -hmm. but so that I can develop, I'll, I'm glad to do whatever I can offer you. I said, don't tell me anything. This is, we never met. I never met the horse in person. I never met the human. Wow. So just tell me, just send me a picture, a photo. So it turned out it was a foal actually. And so I get the picture and I tune in with this foal and it's only just the head of the foal and I could see the mother, the mother's head. And I'm, you know, just trying to make the connection and all I can just keep hearing in my head is like, I'm stumped, I'm stumped, I'm stumped, go below the knee. And I'm like, I don't know what any of this means. This is not making sense. So I write back and I'm like, gee, I'm really sorry. Like, I just, I'm just keep hearing I'm stumped, I'm stumped. I did hear the words go below the knee. The person writes back to me and is like, no, you, you're getting something. Mm. This person's knee below the knee was amputated can you please just see what else you can get? So I'm like, oh, oh my God. like, okay. All right. So what I get, I go back to the, to the horse again and same picture. And what I get is like, I'm just connecting through the soul, right? The soul of the horse. And what I get is there's bad people around me. They want to kill me. Tell them to go away. I want to oh. live. And oh, by the way, can you tell the nice ones to give me some more carrots? I love so this that's horse. That's what I go back to the lady. Jeez. I write this back. I'm like, I hope it's okay, but this is what I'm hearing. This is what I'm yeah. getting. And she's like, that's exactly right. She's like, we have vets here. We're, we're trying oh. to decide, should we euthanize this baby who had this accident, this problem? We don't know. We didn't know. And since you got that, we're going to get a prosthetic and keep this animal alive. And that was just a game changer for me. Like that animal did more service for me. Right. Because that animal helped me realize like I could help. I could you got it. Oh so my that gosh. was like, I mean, I can go on with a gazillion other stories. Like, let me just say this one other one. I yes, please. Ah. I went to, to this um, rescue uh, farm where they rescued animals. And I went to, you know, just to do healing with the animals. It wasn't really about telepathy. I was already really good animal communicator. So I went to go do healing with this cow and I immediately hear, and it had a masculine energy, even though cow, it was a cow. And I hear, oh, don't waste your time on me. I'm an old cow. Oh. Go take care of the others. He had this big tumor underneath his jaw. I'm saying his because it was a male energy, but was a female cow. So tumor under the jaw, which was what they asked me to do healing on the cow with. So I was like, oh my God, instantly in love with this cow. I was like, oh my God, like <laughs> I cannot even, I just love this cow, like so selfless, right? Yeah. And I'm like, oh no, please. Like, I just want to stay with you. I just want to stay. And the cow's like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll love it. And, you know, cause you always ask, like you do have practices to ask permission. You have to ask permission. Free will counts. And so- I got that it was all right. And I stayed with the cow and I'm like doing this healing. And while I'm doing the healing, I'm hearing the cow say, I carry the weight. This chin is the weight of all the cows who were slaughtered before me. Oh, shocks. And <sighs> this is the weight. And so like, <sighs> I'm like having to avoid, you can't get in the emotion of it. Right. Because when you are healing, you tremendous energy. Right. Mm -hmm. But in any case, afterwards I go and I tell people on the farm they're just they're rescue workers and I tell them what I got and they're like Lori that's exactly right that cow was the last one other one rescued from a slaughterhouse Ooh. right before it closed uh, so what happened with her well I mean I was there for the day I offered healing she was at a rescue she was okay. at a, and she a rescue organization accepted in New York. it where she was totally loved and safe and was going to live out her life. You know, she was rescued by that organization. Yeah. I still donate to them. 
I am a big believer, like beyond belief, like a knower that what you give out comes back. And anyway, that was part of my desire anyway, was to be able to contribute to animals. I always wanted to help animals on a global scale. And now I'm just grateful that I can do that, that I can do that because there were times I couldn't. Oh, so my, I love I have, that, that organization. I have one more question and then we'll um, move into the Just Be Practice. We talked about bringing the collective in. What What is the oddest animal that you've worked with? Like uh, like a platypus. Oh, I don't think a platypus is so extinct, are they? Or uh, I don't know, a duck or a snake or something that would be totally unexpected for people to to think about. I mean, I've worked with almost every animal I can imagine, but wow. I, that you could imagine. There's been lots of weird ones, but let me just tell you this, since you asked just three days yeah. ago, yeah. I was having a challenging day, challenging business experience. It's not easy to be in business for yourself. And it's definitely not always an easy journey to do it when you're working with spiritual energy. And <laughs> that can be even harder because you can trigger people and then it can kind of backlash sometimes. So I knew I needed a day of like self-care and self-love. And, you know, that's always the calling when you're having challenges. So I took myself to my favorite beach and I went there and I was surrounded. The This is three days ago, entirely surrounded by manatees. Manatees. Wow. I was the only one on the beach. I had about four hours. I would have stayed, but I mean, it got dark, completely pitch dark. And I mean, I was completely interacting with them. I was in the middle of their circle, kind of. They were feeding, they were nursing calves and they stayed with me the whole day and they would bring their eye up and, and look. And we made lots of eye contact and I would just ask them. And of course I did get to touch them, but only after like the first hour, I didn't even touch them. I just was making sure that it was totally okay with them. Anyway, you know, the animal totem message of of manatees is typically like, slow down, nurture yourself. You're doing too much. Be still, be present. And that is exactly, I mean, that was like a gift of God for me that day, right? right. That was a gift, the animal kingdom taking care of me on a day that I needed that. Oh, that's just so precious. Okay. And before we go into the practice, when Lori, you were talking about before that a lot of people don't want to go through the, the hard, the shadow work yet, if you do, you get to have experiences like that. So you have to go, I'm going to call it shit for a moment. You have to go through the shit and then you get to see all the glitter, but yet you have to go through some of that. And once you do it, there's amazing stuff on the other side. Okay. And Lori's proof of that right here, right now. All right. Can we go into the practice? Um, Just be practice. Or the collective. Can you explain the collective to everybody? Yeah. So the collective is a group of interdimensional beings. Many of them, they're my team in the non-physical. Many of them are with me all the time. Many of them come and go. Many of them, when I'm doing any kind of channeling, they may be part of your team. And they, because I'm with you, they mer we merge. Mm -hmm. So all beings, we're interdimensional too, whether we realize it or not, we just haven't known it. But all beings that I'm working with in the collective are interdimensional. And so many of them are angels, angel guides, angel healers, ascended masters. My lineage that I work with is through Sananda and the hosts, which is the lineage of Jesus, Yeshua, mm -hmm. most of the ascended masters. My other lineage I work with is Melchizedek, the Melchizedek order. They're really connected. There's sometimes, there's always animals in there because animals exist as interdimensional beings too. Animal kingdoms and collectives my higher self, your higher self, planetary bodies sometimes come in, Mother Earth, Gaia. You can speak to at planets. There's really consciousness is in anything, everything, everywhere. It's always available. There's nowhere we can't connect. It's just about being able to attune to that frequency and be there with it and then allow that consciousness to come through. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It definitely does. Do you need time to get there or take a couple breaths or how does it happen for you? No, no. You, it's you just always inspired just by something. So it's more okay. like what, what wants to come through and what's meant to come through. And. Okay. Well, let's go. Yeah. So it just takes a few moments for me to just ask what's meant to come through in the moment from the collective. 
So greetings and blessings. Here we are gathered always at your request. Always grateful and willing to share and contribute. What we would like to offer you on this day is two significant contributions, which we perceive to be offerings that will contribute to expanding your consciousness as in alignment with that which has already been offered and shared today. And the first is on this conversation. And let us also offer here that for those of you listening, if you are willing, as we contribute in conversation, if you are willing to allow your frequency to be gently and lovingly bathed in the energy and frequency that we bring through, you will find, especially for those of you who are sensitive, you will find gentle currents of energy simply flowing through and around you if you are willing and bathing you in this energy, assisting you gently, lovingly, and only as is appropriate for you, whoever you are as an individual, we are here with you present as one and also through the experience of separation, we understand that we are us and you are you, and yet we know also that we are one. So if you will allow these energies, you must, you need not require yourself to consciously be aware of them. You simply must allow yourself, if you are willing, to accept and receive them. That is all. And do your best to breathe and relax. They will support you. Now, as we pro progress and proceed, what we are sharing in terms of information is this. It was, it was said earlier that sometimes, oftentimes, working through what was identified as the shadow or the painful bits of your lives is a, part, is a largely hard and arduous, difficult, and even painful experience. And we would like to elaborate that it is not required that it be painful or difficult. It is indeed sometimes to the human perspective, but this is really true mostly because the human is not consciously choosing to do so in a way that is most harmonious for them, you see. It is not necessary that it be extraordinarily painful. In fact, especially now, at this juncture, it can be quite enjoyable even. For when you begin to learn to utilize energy, you begin to learn how to allow the energy to transmute those things which you are referring to as shadow. You see, the energy will wash it away, will release and expunge it from your field. And when this happens, if you allow it, it can be quite graceful and yes, even enjoyable, even pleasant for the new energy that replaces the old energy will be very appealing, will be a frequency that is pleasant, uplifting, transformative, even similar to what is taking place now and even better. For when you are fully engaged, you will find yourself experiencing bliss-like states. And you will want more and more of that. And it will draw you to it. And in so doing, you will heal and resolve more and more of those shadow aspects. You see, it does not have to be painful. It is sometimes, oftentimes, to the human perspective. There are aspects of pain, but the more and more you engage with these pure frequencies the less painful you will find it to be, the less disruptive you will find it to be, the more enjoyable you will find it to be. And this is what we are offering here. It is not meant to be painful. And since you are using the languaging old paradigm or 3D, we will say that that is 
the experience you associate. You see, you associate things as painful from that perspective. But as you elevate more and more, you will find less and less, there is less and less that you would ever equate as painful. And even those things that you equate as painful, you would find to be very easily transmutable very quickly. So we hope this sheds some light on this and we encourage you all to engage yourself more and more with energy, with pure states of energetic being for transformation is an experience that cannot be learned through your left brain. Not truly, which is why we are here now. Now we will add one more piece to this and this is a separate and yet connected conversation. And this is something that was not touched on earlier, but we believe is appropriate at this time. And what we would like to offer you is that as you all evolve through your own choice and willingness, and as you engage more and more, more and more in the purer frequencies, which are becoming more and more available to all of you, what you will find is that the experience known as duality begins to shift more into an ex experience of plurality, which is to say that you may experience things on multiple levels and layers of consciousness, multiple dimensions or frequency bandwidths is what our preference is. And that with that potential of plurality, you will begin to recognize with more and more clarity, the things you no longer choose to experience. They will still exist for others to experience, but you will have more choice about what you choose to experience and you will have more freedom to engage with more of what you desire and more freedom to disengage from what you no longer desire. You will start to recognize that true freedom exists with more consciousness. That true freedom exists in higher or so, what you call so-called higher frequencies, but really they are pure frequencies of vibrational resonance where you are free, liberated from the densities of the pain and the dross that you are choosing to escape, but cannot escape through resistance or struggle. Cannot escape through what is termed egoic identification. Cannot escape through judgment, duality or polarity but are fully free and liberated from in plurality. This will come in time for those who dedicate themselves to their own journey. will never be withheld from anyone. Are part of the path of awakening, unification. And we will depart with this last additional piece of insight that where your trajectory as humans and human consciousness is evolving into is one where duality and plurality will continue to exist, where the physical experience will continue to thrive. However, with right alignment, evil will be eradicated. Now, many of you may say evil does not exist, and we would agree. However, in what you refer to as the third dimensional paradigm or the lower frequency bandwidths, evil has been created there by the experience of separation. We define evil as human construct. That is the attempt to usurp, dominate, control, manipulate secretly and or covertly, and even overtly the attempt to take away someone else's freedom, free will of choice. 
that does not exist in the higher or pure realms and will be fully eradicated in future timeline experiences, even though the experience of plurality and duality and contrast will continue to exist. And we welcome you into this reality, for this is where we are already now. It has been our great pleasure and honor to share with you at this time. And they're saying we relinquish this <laughs> one to the conversation at hand. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Yummy. I was, uh, in terms of feeling the energy of that, it was just like being bathed in it and then transmute and expunge. I love that word. Like it was, I just sat here and just smiled and just, uh, it was great. Thank you, Lori. Thank you for bringing yourself and the collective and all your animal knowledge. Uh, and we're going to wind it up right now, but yet if you can hang on just a second so you and I can say goodbye uh, ourselves. And I will have Lori's website on there as well as her. I think they're like five free gift offerings that she has. So we'll make sure that those are shared. And girl, we just wish you or does it expand to you a glorious rest of the day and harmony and love and all that great stuff, all that high vibe stuff. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you You're so welcome. much for sharing this time together. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, y'all. Next week, let's keep expanding, expunging, transmuting. You know the drill. All right, bye. Y'all, find me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, True Social, as well as Rumble, BitChute, YouTube, plus a plethora of other audio directories like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. So like, subscribe, do it all. See ya.